Hi everybody, God bless you. I just wanna come on for a few minutes. I have a, a quick, quick word to share with you. Um, it's called Speak Your Truth. And um, this had been something I was preparing for um, a church I was preaching at a couple of weeks ago and I just wanted to um, just do like a, a complete video with all the information on it because it was still very heavy in my heart. And I want to go a little bit deeper on some stuff that um, I wanted to also share with you as well. Um, but yes, so the subject is speak your truth. And God had been um, dealing with me the last, I would say, month or so about speaking the truth. I've always been a person who uh, have felt the need to always want to share and express how I feel verbally. I've always been that kind of person. So um, it wouldn't be right for me not to say to others to also, you know, speak their truth too. that when someone offends you or if someone hurts you or you're hurt by something that you should be able to share it with the person because that brings on a sense of peace for yourself. So I just want to share what God was showing me in scripture and in life as well, a reference to this. And so my scripture for today is John 8 31 and this is the NIV version this is a very popular scripture I'm sure you heard of it and it says to the Jews who have believed him Jesus said if you hold on to my teaching you are really my disciples then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free so basically Jesus is saying that if you read my word and you dissect my word and understand my word it's saying this one thing that I love you basically and that if you know that i love you the truth will set you free that those that don't look other places for what he has already ensured in you what he has already told you and so i really really want to share this that um this was about uh i don't know seven eight years ago maybe and um i was dealing with a lot of stuff i was working at the time um for a college for an um higher ed and i was in the development department and um we had to like watch this go through this training at work and it was talking about some um situations that happened to people and it was basically like um guidelines and 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 um uh, not symptoms but um like ways for you to know if a person is being abused and um, like signs of, 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 of a person being in an abusive uh, relationship. And that was for adults. And that was also as well as for children. And um, it was some testimonials, if you want to call it, from of, uh, offenders. Like some of the things that they would do to attract those they want to abuse. That they have abused or they wanna, they've harmed and stuff like that. And a lot of the information was very, very heavy for me. Like it really, really disturbed me watching it. And um, this session, I think, was uh, just a couple of hours. One afternoon, we had to we had to watch this video. And as a person who had been abused um, and not really correctly had dealt with it, it really did bother me. At the time, I had only shared the ex what had happened to me with my husband. And um, and it, it was just a lot going on, and I hadn't really just come into the knowledge of Christ yet at that time, and it just really, really did bother me. So I I remember going home from work that day and telling my husband like, oh God, I had such a rough day. Like it was it was a terrible day. We had to sit through this training and it talked about all these things and it brought up all these different types of emotions that I didn't really understand how to process i didn't really understand how to get to the root of the situation to remove it and for me to be healed from the situation but i had already um heard about god and known about god and i was like slowly like walking with god but not um in a deep deep relationship as i am right now and i was just like oh my goodness like i don't know what to do or whatever and my husband said to me he's like i can't do anything for you honey like you really are going to have to go to God about this. Like I've done all I can do. I've prayed for you, but all you can do right now is really, really sit with God and release this to the Holy Spirit and allow yourself to be healed. And I was just like, oh my God, like that was just so overwhelming for me to hear him say something like that. But my husband's always been one to like really, really tell me the truth. Like 
it's with love, but this is what needs to be done. So he said, okay, well, I'm going to go. At the time, he lived in a condo. He said, I'm going to go take the kids. I'm going to go down to the pool. I'm going to give you time to, like, go settle down, relax, and, like, have your time with God. And our children at the time were young. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, that's a big benefit for me. So I then went and, um, like, ran water for a bath. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to take, like, a nice little bubble bath and relax and just, you know, get all what is bothering me. Because it was more than just the abuse I was dealing with. It was just reflected on my past in general. I had suicide attempts. Um, I was molested. I was emotionally unstable. I felt abandoned. I felt um, just like all these, like just anxiety. I had really bad anxiety at the time. I, I had dealt with um, panic attacks at the time. So it was just like, I've got to like, okay, God, please. So at this point, I like wash my face and like, you know, I'm getting myself ready to take a shower or whatever. And I am like boohoo crying. And then it was even things that was coming to my remembrance that I didn't even realize that was bothering me. It was all kinds of past situations, past people that had hurt me. And I didn't even realize that that was even something that was on my mind, but it was. And so I'm like, okay, God, like, I need you to like come and clean me up. Like I need you to come and do this and come and fix it because I can't do it myself. Like I need you to come and I started crying and and worshiping and I just felt this overwhelming sensation all over me and now I have understood that that was the Holy Spirit dealing with me. Like I took off my makeup, I took off my wig. I was like bare to God. I'm like, okay, God, you've got to come and like, fix me. Like I need to be fixed. And I remember that was the first time, the first time I had ever heard the Holy Spirit and the Holy, and, and the Holy Spirit said to me, cast your cares, cast your cares. And I just started like shouting and like, like saying all these things, like all these different scenarios and situations. I was like, Okay, I'm dealing with this. I'm dealing with this. Like, check, check, check. Like, all these things. Not realizing that these things were bothering me. But at that time when I released it, I started to feel free. Not only did I feel free, but also understanding that it metaphorically and physically me getting into the, in the tub was me being baptized. And... That was like the first time. So then that night, like literally that night, I felt so good. I, I slept so well that night. And my husband came back and he said to me, you look different. Like you look different. And I remember, I think it was like a Tuesday night. Um, the rest of the week had gone so smoothly that like I had a great week or whatever. Then that next Monday came and it was like back to it. You know, like I'm expecting the enemy. And I remember walking into my office, well, the other office, and one of my colleagues saying to me, what happened to you? And I'm just thinking like, well, what do you mean? Like, what happened to me? She's like, you look different. She's like, I even, you even look like you're walking differently. And it was to a point that in my life, like I would honestly say up until that time, like I think during my lunch break, I used to cry like every single day. I was so unhappy. I was so miserable. I was hurting so much that like, I think it even made me kind of like walk. Like I had like this really bad posture and it was amazing how God had come in and he was just like, I, I need to use you, that there are other people that are out there that are like you, that have experienced this, that have gone through what you've gone through, but you can't help them if you are messed up. I really need needed you to surrender this to me so that I could use you to help other people. And so at that point, I was just like, all right, God, I'm open. Like what, what, what you need me to do? You know, and then it was like my faith was renewed. My faith was different. Like I could see it, the faith working in my family. I saw it in my husband. I saw it in my children. I saw it with my mom and my sister and my brother. Like I saw it in family members. I saw it as a group with other people. I saw it in the office. I saw it 
that it like what me changing and me being a different person and me being a prayerful person was able to help others help others that I may have known or may have not known but it was like I decided at this point that whatever this generational curse was that whatever this this um this spirit that wasn't of God that was lurking in my family it was going to stop with me what happened to me wasn't going to happen to my children. What happened to me wasn't going to go on to my grandkids, that it was going to stop with me, that I was going to be the one to say, okay, that's enough. Enough is enough. And I think that a lot of times that I, the reason why I personally have so much opposition is because I am that person to speak that, okay, no, that's foolishness. We're not going to accept it. It's stopping right here. Bind and loose and let's move on. And so I know what you're saying. So when I was preparing this word, I was like, God, what do you want me to say to your people? Because I believe that you, you this video is not, not a coincidence that you wanted to hear something, that there was a word for you from God and God is saying to speak your truth. And I know what you're saying. Well, Kanisha, you didn't go through what I've been through. But these are the things that God was showing me, no matter what your situation is, to speak your truth. If you're dealing with divorce, if you're dealing with bankruptcy, if you're dealing with the job loss, if you're dealing with health issues right now, if you got a bad report from the doctor, you're worried about your children, if you dealt with trauma and unhealthy relationships and you're just thinking, I stayed in that relationship too long. No, it's not too late. If you have been raped, if you have been fondled or molested, if you just been through a situation and you just have not forgiven that person who's harmed you even if the person is your your wife or your husband or your mother or your father like someone close close to you if it was a boss or a supervisor or even for someone who cut you off in traffic that you're still dealing with these situations that god is saying to release it to him that there are things that he wants you to do but you can't he can't get to you he can't get to you because it's too many weeds around you it's too many um it's too much uh, sh uh, shrubbery, too much bushes and stuff around that you have guarded around your heart. That there are things that he want to help you with, but he can't get to it because you're not open to it. You're not available to it. And so God is God is saying that you took a risk of faith, and the risk of faith was well, faith was listening to this word that you want to hear something, and he is saying that give it to me to cast your cares to let it go, that I am right here, that I will never forsake you, that I want the best for you, that I have plans for you, but I need you to let me do my job in your life. All you got to do is open the door. He'll come on in and, and take care of everything else. And so these are some things that God was telling me as well, that he said, um, I think he wants you to remember when it comes to you as a person. He says, that you are chosen, that you are blessed, that you are strong, that you are bold, that you are beautiful, that you are fearless, that you are victorious, that you are loved, and that you are free. And being free, you, you've been set free from the past. You've been set free from the lies and you've been set free from what those people said about you, what mama and daddy said about you, what auntie and uncle said about you, what those people said about you that it wasn't true. It's about what God says. His word says that you are loved. His word says that you are free. His word says that you are chosen. That is what you are to believe. I know that it's difficult it is so, so difficult because everyone is at a different place in life and that there are certain things that you may want to do or there are things that God has said that you are to do, but you feel that you can't do it because you're not at a certain level. And don't let that be the reason. Don't let that be the reason to stop you. Don't set in your mind that, well, I haven't completely like, you know, giving up that, you know, I, I still like the party. I still like the club. I still like to do this and blah, 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 blah. I can't be with you, God, because I still want to do these things. Like, no, give him a chance. Like, give him a chance because those things that they don't last forever. I can tell you right now, my husband and I, we were the biggest partiers. We used to club all the time. We used to out in the club every weekend, going out, drinking and doing this and doing Like, we, we were the party starters. We were at, we were the people who had the parties, who had the drinks, who would pay for the drinks. You need a ride to the club? Ride with, like, we were the people 
to to do all this stuff. And it got to one point when it was like, mm, it was the same old same old. It was boring. It wasn't fun. Like it was just like, oh, you you get all dressed up, you get this, you get that, or whatever. People see you, and then like, okay, like what what's new? What's new? But then when God came into our lives and started like pruning us and and showing us these great things, it was just like his love was way, way more fun than being to the club and going out and going here and going there and doing all these things with people who really was envious of us, who didn't want us to do better, who didn't, who said that they loved us and that they cared about us, but they just really just wanted to see how it could benefit them. You know, I would say to my husband, like the people that we are with have way, way, way more physically than what we had. But yet we were the one who were the wealthiest because we trusted in God. But God was like, I need you to be in the church house, not in the club. I need you to be here because so-and-so is looking at you and I need you to be prepared when they come to you to tell that they're dealing with this situation and they need to hear about healing. Not that you can't share your testimony with someone at the club, not saying that, you could. That could be where God would have you to be to share. And I've been in that situation and had to share a word with somebody inside of a nightclub in a bathroom. I've been there. I've done it. So it's not that it's not possible, but there are other places that we need to go and be. Because if I was at the club with so-and-so, what about the person that's at home that's texting me, that's talking about suicide, and I, I'm not looking at my phone because I'm in a club dancing. See, so we've had to make sure that we have an ear to hear from God and to be able to act on what he wants us to do. So I just want to share that word with you really, really quickly and just let you know and remind you that you are loved, that you are chosen, that God has your back, that you just have to simply just give it to him, that what Whatever it is that's been pondering you, that has been bothering you, that has been urging you, trying to hurt you, trying to harm you, that the enemy wants to use against you, God will, will always take that situation. He can take that situation and turn it for good. I can say this because I've been there, that I was molested by a family member, but that situation that happened to me God pulled and birthed a nonprofit out of it. So now I am able to go into schools, to go um, into churches, to go and meet with other ministries and other nonprofits and other business settings and go and be able to share what happened to me, to be able to say, well, this is, this is, a, this is a sign of an unhealthy relationship, get out. Or flip script, that I can talk to these children, talk to children, which I have done, to be able to say, well, um, you don't sit on a, on a, as a young lady, you don't sit on a man's lap. That is not appropriate for you to do. Tell the young ladies, pull your skirt down a little bit. It's okay, you pull down your skirt a little bit. So like there are certain things that God has aided me and he took my non took took this nonprofit, he pulled it out of me, what the enemy wanted to use, because if I would have, killed myself, there would be no Power 7 Inc. God, the situation was unfortunate and it happened, but God surrounded it, surrounded it and me with his grace and he birthed out of me this nonprofit. So now I'm able to go and minister to these young moms and talk to them about these unhealthy relationships. I'm able to go into these schools and talk to these young ladies and young men about um, healthy and unhealthy touching. I'm able to go and share the word and go and share with them what God has said, how God feels about them, what God is doing in the kingdom. So whatever it is that God has for you, if it's a business or whatever, a ministry, if it's a book, if it's a um, organization he wants you to participate in, whatever it is, God will give you the grace. He will give you the finances. He will give you the knowledge. He will give you the right people to get everything started in the right way and so you just have to trust in him so i just want to leave you out with that quick quick word god bless you god bless you god bless you in jesus name that i love you that god loves you and if no one has told you recently that you are love
Have a wonderful, wonderful day. God bless you. Good night.